to some of the habits that you have or some of the sales scripts that you have because that state of fear is running the show. And solid sales scripts and fear don't go together. They're not magnetically attractive. Does that make sense? So if this is running the show, this doesn't, you don't have access to it. So if you can't control your emotions, you're really restricted with your abilities in business and relationships in your entire life. But once you get to a point where you can absolutely master your emotions, there's no situation that you can't recognize and change on a dime if you have total emotional control. Does that make sense how important that is? And it, it, it is profound. It might take a little bit of practice, but I'll tell you what, it's so powerful. I haven't chosen uh, the, uh, the emotion anger more than three times in the last four years. And what I now know is that emotions are chosen just like food at a buffet. Have any of you ever put a piece of food on a buffet that you didn't want to eat? And like somebody else just put it on your plate? Or did you actually choose to put it on your plate? So what if your emotions were like that? And you're like, you know what? Depression doesn't serve me right now, so I'm not going to put it on my plate. How many of you would like to have that level of intentional control over your emotions? And that's what's available if you understand how they're put on. Make it sense so far? Yeah. All right. So I want to give you a visual. But to do that, I've got to take my jacket off a little bit. I just oh, prepare you, you know? Because I know you guys are a little sensitive here. So let me explain, let me show you how we put on these identities from a visual perspective. See, the mind has three really powerful functions. Okay, you might want to write these down. These are important to understand. The mind, the unconscious mind has three really powerful functions. Function number one is to keep you emotionally safe. Function number two is to figure everything out. Any of you like to figure stuff out? Not only do you like to figure stuff out, your mind can't not figure stuff out. It's what it does. It's a problem-solving mechanism. And then the third thing is you always want to be right. Most people would rather be right than happy. Especially unconsciously. To the unconscious mind, being right is way more important and more attractive than being happy. And it's crazy to think about, but that's the way the unconscious mind works. So your unconscious mind has these three functions. And that's how all of our problems get created, basically. Do you have a question right here? Yeah. Um, is subconscious and unconscious the same thing? Same thing, yeah. Thank you. The question was, is subconscious and unconscious the same thing? Yeah. So here's what happens. We're in a state of blind belief early on, right? Remember that? And so whatever happens in our life, we have to choose a meaning for it. And as soon as we choose a meaning, then we get a conclusion and we live our life based on that meaning. So let's say I'm six months old and I cry because I'm, I'm hungry or something, right? And I cry and mommy's not there at first, but then mommy shows up and she feeds me. I need to put a meaning on that. What's a meaning that I might put on that? So I'm trying to figure stuff out. If I cry, I get what I want, right? So if I, if I uh, make a big of a fuss, a big enough fuss, I'll get what I want. So I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. So that's a meaning that I have, and I'm going to just put that on, and I'm going to wear that one. Oh, I got this life thing figured out. If I cry, I get what I want. Now, as soon as you figure something out, you now want to be right at all costs. So here's what happens. It's like you put on a, a new set of glasses. And you're going to look at the entire world through these new set of lenses called, if I cry, I get what I want. And then you try to search for more evidence to support this new thought that you have because I'm highly committed to being right. Make sense? Do any of you ever know anybody who has this story in their head and they're so stubborn and anything you say they don't listen to because you want to be right? Yeah. You're like that too. We all are. Unconsciously. Now, a lot of you might go, I'm not stubborn. Really? <laughs> you, we're all unconsciously very stubborn. It's the way our mind works. It's the way our unconscious brain works. Everybody with me so far? So now I'm going to go around my life trying to figure, you know, find evidence. And Chris said this when he started off the whole program on Thursday. You're always going to find what you're looking for. True? Remember? Find brown. While you're looking for brown, you didn't see red, right? We're always going to find what we're looking for when we're looking through these set of lenses, okay? That's just one identity. So now, let's say I'm two years old.
years old. How many of you have siblings in here? Cool. So let's say I'm two years old, and my mom and dad have another child. Now here I am, the love of their life, the only one they ever need. I get everything I want as long as I cry. And then they have this other thing. I need to figure that out. What's the meaning that I might put on that? They, might, they don't love me anymore. Maybe I'm not enough. If they needed another one, maybe I'm not enough. You see how that can work? You didn't consciously think that, but almost all people who have a brother or sister have an inadequacy belief unconsciously because there's another one of you, at least. God forbid if there's like six or seven of you. Because how many opportunities have you had to where you didn't get as much food to eat as everybody else? Or your Christmas presents didn't cost the same as your brothers. Right? We have so many opportunities to go, well, what happened here? Maybe I'm not enough. So now I've got this I'm not enough belief working. Right? So if I cry to get what I want, but also I think I'm not enough now. So I've got this second filter that I'm looking through life for. And I'm unconsciously committed to seek evidence to prove this true. And I'm, at the, I'm only two years old, you guys. So this is not a conscious choice. I don't even know what's going on at this point. But unconsciously, the mind is working. And it's trying to find evidence that makes this true. Is everybody with me? Okay, this is only two. So what if what happens to... Uh, let, let me tell you what happened to me when I was six. I was six years old. My sister, who's ten years old with me, came into the room one time with some friends. And she goes, hey, get out of here. This is my idol. This is the, the, the one person that makes me laugh, that I can make laugh. This is my best friend. Why did she just tell me to get lost? So what do you think I decided at that point when I was six years old? I'm a pest. So I'm a pest, that means people don't want me around. Which matches the other identity of not being good enough, right? For me, my I'm not good enough happened when I was six years old hard to see anymore. <laughs> so now I've got this holy cow. People don't want me around. So I was unconsciously committed to paying attention to every time that I wasn't picked first on the basketball court or people didn't ask me to dance in middle school. I was unconsciously committed to finding evidence to prove this true. For 26 and a half years, this is the way I lived my life. Unconsciously, didn't even know. For most of us in here, that's the way we're living our lives. We're unconsciously trying to find evidence for some disempowering belief that we have. For how many of you is this making sense? Can you recognize that this is operating for you? Right? So let's say you're 12 years old. Or here's what happened to me. When I was 11 years old, I was, I was uh, playing baseball and my coach was throwing me pitches and I was crushing them. We were doing batting practice and I was hitting them really far. Would have been home runs. And as I was hitting them, he started getting mad. He was really old. He was like probably 33. <laughs> <laughs> At that time, man, that guy was ancient. <laughs> so he's this 33-year-old, really old guy, throwing pitches as hard as he can, and I'm hitting him farther and farther, the harder he throws him, and he starts going, why don't you ever do this in the game? You never do this in the game. Why can't you do this in the game? And at the time, I'm like, this is awesome. This old dude's getting mad. And I was just... <laughs> but what I didn't realize until a couple years ago is I picked that up and I took it on. So a new identity that I have was, I don't perform in the games, which got overgeneralized, and that's one of the problems with these things, is that, uh-oh. <laughs> Lights out now. One of, one of the problems with these things is they get overgeneralized. So now that I'm not only not perform in baseball games, I don't perform when you know, in the clutch. I, I just, when it's time to, to perform, when it's time to get it done, when it matters, I don't show up. And that's the way I lived a lot of my life ago. Okay? I think I got one more around here. <laughs> now let me talk to you about one that I deal with a lot, which is... <laughs>
can you also see that this is how we live our life too? Unconsciously, right? So this last one I want to talk to you briefly about is abandonment. Every single one of you has an abandonment issue. You don't have to have been adopted or gone through a divorce to have an abandonment issue. Every single one of you at some point in time had the worst abandonment thing that happened to you. Now it doesn't matter what that is compared to everybody else, but most people have an abandonment issue. And what that creates is a value of stability. You know, you don't want people to rock the boat. You don't want any surprises. Did any of you in here? I can't see anyway. But did any of you in here? <laughs> raise your hands so everybody else can see. Um, I, uh, realize that you don't like surprises. You don't like when people rock the boat and stuff. For a lot of us, that was created from some sort of abandonment issue. <laughs> Divorce or having kids or whatever, it doesn't matter what it is. Don't think too much about it. 